And when you think of like slope, where's a place you use the word slope other than math class? Go for it. A hill. A hill. Uh, so like you're going to hit the slopes. You're going snowboarding or skiing or whatever is popular these days. Um, so. Skiing, snowboarding, they always happen on hills. Uh, Nate's right. So slope is really kind of looking at like a line graph. You know, what is the hill? What does the steepness of the line graph look like? Um, so then that's going to be our first blank there. Yep, steepness. So describes the steepness of a line. So when we're looking at a graph, is it a steep line? Does it go up quickly? Does it go up gradually? Or so on. So we have these little graphs here. Um, if we wanted to have a small positive slope, I wouldn't write in this purple thing yet, but if we're talking positive, is positive going to be going up like the purple or down like the blue? Up. up like the purple. Nice. So we always look at graphs as though you're going from left to right on the x-axis. So you're going towards the right on the x-axis. If it's positive, it's going up. You know, if you're around positive people, your attitude will go up. If it's a small positive slope, is it going up gradually, going up steeply? Gradually. Gradually, nice. So it doesn't really matter where you start. You could start at the origin down here if you wanted to. I'm going to start up a little bit higher, but I'm going to have a line that goes upward kind of gradually. Yes? Yeah. You know what? You love it. If we wanted to have a large positive slope, then our line would just have to go up. Straight up. Maybe not straight up. But very up. But at least it's going to be steeper, something like that. Good? And straight up, we'll actually talk about slope of vertical lines a little bit later on. But OK, if we have a small negative slope, we have a line that's going to be going down. And it's going to be going down how? Gradually. gradually. Down. Yep. So I'm going to start up a little bit higher on my graph and have something that's kind of gradually going down. If I wanted to have a large negative slope, it goes down, down. very down. Very fast or steeply or something like that. We OK on those? Now. Once you get to high school, when you talk about slope, probably the first thing that will pop in your head is going to be an equation. And we don't get the equation in today's notes. We kind of get the what's behind it. Uh, so slope, they use the words rise over run. So rise over run. That if we're looking at a line, we look at how much it rises. Rises would be which direction? Up, up or down. down. So how much does it go up or down? divided by how much it goes side to side. Do you agree if you're running, it's a whole lot easier to run on level ground than it is on hills? Yeah. Um, up hills is just downright hard. Down. Downhill for a long ways, it feels good for a while, but your knees will start to hurt, at least yeah. if you get old, like your teacher. Um, but uh, so, so running is best. I'd like to try to convince you on horizontal ground, at least for any distance of time. But slope is going to be rise over run. Now, some teachers, to try to get people to remember that, they spell rise this way. And I'm just a little bit too freakish to really be able to handle that. Um, but if you want to spell rise, R-Y-S-E, to help you remember that Y, well, this, the rise is in the Y direction, go for it. But that just kind of makes me get like little heart palpitations. And I, yeah, I can't handle that spell wrong. Um, but if you thought I was normal, you haven't been in class yet this year. But are we OK for rise over run? And uh, so if we're looking at those, then if we have a graph, such as this one here, we wanted to find, OK, what's going to be the slope of this graph? What I would recommend is find a spot. Like this right here is kind of a pain, because we don't really know exactly for sure what the y value is. Agreed? Yeah. So it's kind of like in the middle. So it looks like it's kind of negative something 0.5-ish, but we're not totally sure. But do you agree if we go right here? That right there, before I covered over it with the blue, um, this looks like it's at a nice intersection point. If you go and find another spot that looks like it's at a nice intersection point, maybe here, we want to figure out if we want the slope. Well, slope, I'm going to show my work and write equals rise over run. If you do that, it'll help you remember it more long term, but some people don't do it. But if we're going from one point to the other, if I kind of do this side to side, okay, we go that much to the side, we go up this much. The rise is going to be what? 92. The rise is what number? Not an angle, but how much do I go up between this point and this point? It's a number less than four, two. two. Yep, that the up is going to be this side here, right? Yep. That I go up, so I start out at this height, and then I go up one, up two. So the rise will be two, and it's up. So is it a positive two or a negative two? Up is positive. And if I'm going to the right on a graph, because I'm going starting here, going to the right this much, and then up to, so I'm going to the right, one, two, three, four. Positive four, negative four. Positive. Because it's to the right, it's positive four. So my slope then, if I reduce two fourths, is one half. 
So in other words, this one here should have a slope of 1 half. I'm going to show that two different ways. Feel free to not mess up your graph. But some people are like, well, OK, we went this way, and then we went up. Well, what if we went the other direction? That if I go this way to the left, do you agree now my run is a negative 4? Yeah, and then you go negative 2. Perfect. Hank sees it. Now I go down 2, so my rise is a negative 2. Negative 2 over negative 4 also equals negative 1 half. Negative positive 1 over negative one 2, half. which equals positive 1 over 2, because the negatives are going to cancel. So the 2 over 4 becomes 1 half. The negatives drop out. You also could, I'm going to say start at this point here and pick some point way over here-ish. If I were to figure out how far I go to the side, how much I go up, we're just going to have a larger fraction than 2 fourths that would reduce down to 2 fourths. Is that fair? Okay. Then... And if we pick a spot, it crosses nicely. So I'm going to go with this spot here. And you could, if you're sure it's a good, if you're sure it's a good fit, you can go with two spots close together. Sometimes, if you want to be a little more accurate, you can start a little, you go a little further away and like jump way down to one like this. But it shouldn't matter if I draw the line correctly and give it to you. It shouldn't matter if you do down, well, let's just do slope equals rise over run. Let's say we're going to do these two close ones up here in the upper left. Um, so if I'm starting here and going to this one, my rise is one, one down. Yep. Negative one. So we do a negative one. And then we go one to the right, which would be positive one. So that reduces to a slope of one close. close. Negative one. So slope of negative one. And if you were to, on a properly drawn graph, do that same thing, start here, go all the way down to this, and then go all the way across to that, now I should have, I think it's down 9, and then over 9, which then also is negative 1. Okay? I'm great. Um, I think we only have one more thing, right? In the back? Perfect. So this back side... We're doing similar in that we're trying to apply slope. We want to draw a line through 0, 0. So we know 0, 0 is on our graph, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a dot right there at the origin then at over 0, up 0. Now we know the slope is 2 thirds. In the past, we've always gotten lines from having points. Um, and we don't know any like other points like 3, 4, or 7, negative 2. But we know the slope is 2 thirds. And what are the R words for slope? Slope is rise, run. rise over run. So we could use the slope to find other points because we know we need to go up 2, because it's positive 2, every time we go 3 to the right, right um, because it's a positive 3. So if I start at my origin, because we know that point's on the graph, I rise 2, then I run 3 to the right. This point here also has to be on my graph, so over 2, up 3. Now, you can take and put a ruler on those, but your teacher is going to be checking, are you accurate, kind of on the ends of your graph, too. So I would recommend it doesn't take long to just say, okay, now I'm going to start there. I'm going to go up two more, so up two over three more. So I know this point's on my graph. Put a dot there. And it really goes quite quickly, and as long as you're not switching from, like, the laser pointer to the pen. So I can go up two, three to the right. Or do you agree I could also go... Down. down two and three to the left. left. So if you want to get some more accurate ones, you could say, well, down two over three to the left. This would be a point. And then you could go down another two over three more to the left. So find a bunch of points, then take your nice pretty straight edge, oh. put it there on your graph paper. And all those points are supposed to be on this line. So now we can take, and I'll be with you in a moment. Vote. Thank you, sir. Um, can take all those points, do a nice straight line through it, and shazam, we have our line. Any questions we should go over all together?